do face to face and today we're going to stay in New York City. We're going to talk about the writing. We're going to have with Marcia. Welcome to face to face. Thank you. And uh, so you just came out with a book, Pickles, in, uh, Pickles Progress. Pickles Progress, a novel. Uh, so, but before we go with the book, tell us a little bit more about your creative writing background. Right. Well, I've uh, I've had a couple of creative careers. Okay. And I started. I moved to New York City in 1973, and I was a professional yesterday. oboist. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, I was an oboist for 30 years here in New York City. Okay. A professional oboist. Okay. Then I was an interior designer for 15 years. Okay. And I'm 80. Uh -huh. No, just kidding. <laughs> and then I uh, became a writer about 10 years ago. I published a memoir two years ago, and then this is my debut fiction okay. uh, novel. Oh, so that's your first fiction for you? Yes, first oh, fiction. Great. Yes. And I'm also making a documentary film called The Creative Imperative, so okay. that's coming out. Oh, wow. Well. So you wanted to start by just writing, by reading a couple of, of paragraphs? Yes. To give us some kind of, uh, to put put us in the mood. I would love that. Okay. This is a novel that is, is uh, set in Manhattan. It takes place over five weeks. So I'm going to uh, read the first three paragraphs. Okay. Twenty bridges connect the island of Manhattan to the rest of the world. Only one spans westward over the Hudson River and spills onto the lip of America's heartland. Each year, more than 100 million vehicles make their way onto eight lanes on the upper level and six lanes on the lower level of the George Washington Bridge, traveling back and forth in the name of a dollar, perhaps for some manner of love, maybe just for the view. And if cars and trucks aren't enough, walkers, runners, cyclists, skateboarders, bird watchers, and jumpers alike can also enjoy the scenery from the, the walkway known as the South Sidewalk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the eastbound on-ramp from Leonia, New Jersey, offers a surprisingly short approach. Suddenly, as if from thin air, steel cables loom above, swing swinging like silver-spun jump ropes, playing double dutch over the vehicles. Massive and audacious, the bent cords ascend and seem to evaporate into a vaulted sky. And on a misty night, the terracotta buildings to the east in Manhattan appear as boxy smears of potter's clay, notched out with squares of glass, reflecting an occasional headlight hitting the mark. Be it a reveler returning from a late night party or a sleepy trucker clocking a 12 hour overtime shift, the George Washington Bridge suspends many disparate lives during the early hours of a Sunday morning. Karen and Stan McArdle pulled onto the George Washington Bridge, headed toward the Upper West Side of Manhattan. It was just after 3 a.m., and they were cranky, probably because they were drunk. They'd stayed at the dinner party far too long, and Karen had a few more cocktails than she needed, placing herself in that vulnerable corner where Stan could prick her with his ape of marital righteousness. That's just how their relationship felt, sharp and sometimes dangerous yet strangely, strangely alive as they explored those moments when one or the other might lunge forward and twist that bright, cold metal a tad, then deftly retract the sword. The trick was to know how far to penetrate the dagger and how long it could linger without bleeding out the heart. Wow. So this is really New York. Yes. And then, so you, you, uh, you want to... Do you see New York like this, or you want to exaggerate the characters and... and well, the characters are very real, at uh -huh. least to me. Uh -huh. They, you know, uh, people are huge in their bandwidth of what they can do, what they're willing to do, mm -hmm. what they can't do, what's restricting them, and a lot of the times it's about love. So my book is about four people, two identical twins, uh -huh. one twin who is married to uh, Karen, uh -huh a dog named the Doodles, and a woman who these drunk people run into on the George Washington Bridge in the middle of the night whose boyfriend has just jumped over and killed himself. And she's left in the middle of the bridge, and they pick her up, and, that, and they call the brother who lives in the bridge apartments 
across the way, which lays on the Cross Bronx Expressway mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on the other side in Manhattan, mm -hmm. and the four of them get tangled up into a, a really messy weave of, um, of love, idealized love, who they think they want to love, the love that they want to get, and recklessness. But it's true that in New York, it's a lot of love story. I mean, it's, it's, it's I mean, for many years, for many, many uh, situations from uh, the East, to the gay scene, it's it's a lot of uh, uh, so you you were inspired by a, a dysfunctional family and the love and oh sure, dysfunctional families are always <laughs> sort of the heartbeat of of everything that I'm thinking about in the book. Um, these people on the surface function very well. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the Karen and Stan have a high-end architectural firm. Okay. You know, they they renovate houses and apartments for the billionaires. Okay. Pickle McCardle, my protagonist, who's Pickle's progress, is a New York City detective. Oh, okay. So, uh, but he's an identical twin with uh -huh. Stan, uh -huh. and um, so they have a twinship bond. But they're in competition in other ways. And um, this woman, Junie, who's left on the bridge, whose boyfriend just jumped over, becomes kind of a guileless pawn for the three of them to sort of work against and work out their family dysfunction against her. She's um, an unwitting pawn in the whole thing. And of course, Pickles falls in love with her. Um, so it sort of complicates things. So it's complicated yeah. even more. Mm -hmm. And then, so how did you come up with, uh, with what inspire you to, to, to go that route? Well, when I was in college, I knew twin, identical twin women who looked exactly alike. And mm -hmm. my twins in this book look exactly alike. Mm -hmm. Really, you can't tell the difference. And one of these twins got engaged. And she was afraid that her fiancé was attracted to her sister. And they looked exactly alike. She told me about this concern. And I said, well, ask him. And she asked him, and he said, um, no, 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 I'm not, you know, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not attracted, I'm not attracted. And she was relieved, and she told me, he's fine, we're all good. How and can, how, how, exactly. How can, exactly, so, the so they're married still, you'll be happy to know, happily. Oh, yeah? But she told me this, and I just said, oh, that's great, oh, good, so good luck, wonderful. And I went, and I was thinking in my, in my head, no. No. It cannot be. No, it cannot be. So what is so the novel also explores um, aspects of attraction in this way, and also in twinship, nature and nurture, because another. Did you find other other twinship relation than you could investigate? You need to do a study a PhD on the. I didn't. It was all my imagination. Yeah. That's the great thing about fiction. You can make it all up, uh -huh. and anything can be it's true. Exactly. <laughs> you know, so I'm not worrying about any of that. Great. Okay, fantastic. And then, so, but uh, because we have just a few minutes left, yes. so um, um, about the book. You know, it's available in bookstores in New York City and everywhere. And, and everywhere. And on okay. the World Wide Interweb. Wow, it's unbelievable. <laughs> so people can order it. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Yes. And you mentioned about something about videos. Do you want to talk about videos? So you you mean my, my documentary, documentary film? film? Yes. I'm making. Maybe just very briefly. Very briefly. You want the to? film is called, it's a documentary film called The Creative Imperative. Okay. Its premiere is on June 9th. At oh, the, so it's already more or less, it's finished? It's pretty done. much. <gasps> it's, its premiere is on June 9th at the New York Society Library on okay. 7, East 79th Street here yeah. in New York City. Yeah. And I interview musicians, writers, actors, dancers, and fine artists. I ask them all the same three questions and they talk about their experience of being an artist in the world and their personal relationship to the creative process. So I'm trying to distill oh, the essence of creativity wow, in this film. Yeah. So you're going to have to come back, and then we show a little bit of the documentary, and then you uh, give us more insight. I would love that. OK. Thank you so much for your patience. Thank you so much for coming. My pleasure. And um, that was uh, Face to Face. And please keep watching your news on Presenza.com. And thank you again for being on the show. My pleasure. Thank you.